Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> I want to go back a little bit, and I want to run through this pretty fast because I, I, I kind of want to drive on how great our God is, you know, yeah. literally, and everything that we do in our life. Mm -hmm. And at times when we look at things, we just don't see any way out. And if we turn it over to Him, we always find that way out. Uh, when I was born, I was born in Macon, Georgia, um, Warner Robins Air Force Base. Um, my mom was a stripper. Um, at that time, in those days, they didn't say stripper, they said go-go dancers. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I didn't have much of an upbringing. Mom was gone all the time. And I'm talking about my biological mom. I have an adopted mother. Her name is Dee Dee. And she lives in Modesto, and she's a beautiful woman, and, and she is my mother of life um, and mother of Christ. Uh, but again, going back to when I was five, I had a lot of these things. I was home alone. My, my two older brothers, which was, uh, I was five, six, and then seven. Those were the age of my brothers. And going through this, we were living out of trash cans because mom was never home. When she was home, she was with some guy in her room, which I never remember her being there in the whole time that I lived in Georgia. Uh, we fought all the time, um, sexually abused, physically abused. Um, everything that you can think of. My mom meets a man, moves to Napa, California. Now, I fought in Georgia because of the color of my skin. And I don't know if some of you, a lot of you who were around back in the 60s and the uh, early 70s, and I mean early like 70, 71, huge racial riots. People were dying because of the color of their skin. Well, we were plopped right in the middle of an all African American <coughs> community. So you imagine, as a kid, I was fighting the color of my skin, but I didn't know that. I knew there was something wrong with me. So I would go to school, I would fight. I would punch my teachers. I would not go to school and hide. Then when I wasn't at school, I was living at um, some, you know, some people's house that were relatives, and we were getting abused. So there was really no out for me. My mom meets this guy supposedly moved to Napa, California and start this American dream. We get there, he's from the military. And we didn't have any rules, so he tries to put these structures on us. Well, that didn't work so well. So I ended up fighting at school, fighting at home, screaming and yelling all the time because that's all they did was fight. I ran away, 10 years old. Couldn't deal with it anymore. And I fought because I spoke differently. I had that southern draw. I dressed like trailer park trash. So, I fought. Now, a lot of people act in different ways. Some people get secluded, they don't speak out, and they get picked on. Some people, frustration, and they act out, so they fight. So there's a lot of different ways to, to react to the abuse you take. None of them are good. So with this, I ran away. Ten years old, I got stabbed. I was living in a car. I got stabbed, hanging out with the wrong people, obviously not going to school, running around with the wrong crowd, got stabbed, went into the hospital, got arrested obviously, ran away, no home. <laughs> that was a knockout punch there. <laughs> um, but with that, you know, I ended up getting fingerprinted. I had many, many um, theft charges. Strong arm robbery. Now listen, I want you to remember, I'm 10 years old. I want you, to, I want you to look around at your kid at 10. And imagine strong arm robbery. Imagine getting stabbed. That's a kid growing up pretty fast. I go into placement. Now a lot of times, kids think, that sucks. That's the best thing that could have happened to me. I go into placement, into juvenile hall. I'm 10 years old. I get my head shoved in the toilet. I'm fighting for my life. I mean, these kids are 17, 16, been in California Youth Authority, in and out of, um, you know, group homes, and, you know, they're just, you know, they're hardcore kind of kids. Every now and then you get a kid in there that's been in there once or twice, but the majority of them, 90% of them are, you know, repeaters. They're in there a lot. So I'm thrown in the mix of this. So I'm surviving. I go to several different placements. I fail those placements. And I fail them for good reasons because, it's, I, you know, for some reason I had this, this desire to be something more. Even though I'm going through these rough times, as most kids, 
You want something more. You don't know what it is. And when you get structure and you get that kind of thing, you kind of fight it. Now, kind of, a lot. But you, you do want it. Eventually, that's what you want. If you don't have it, you need it. And you want it. With that being said, being put into placement, failed several placements, ran away from them, I found Christ at 10 in between all of this stuff that I just told you. I found Christ. Now, accepting Him? Yeah. Knowing Him? The Holy Spirit? I felt it. That's why I wanted it. In between all that, my mom, with all the struggles that she had, she was married four times, and I'm talking about biological mother. She struggled so much with relationships. And it came to a point where she was at rock bottom. And she went to a church. And she found Christ. Now, I want to give you an experience about what it looks like from a kid who, who is looking for something better and sees a woman, and it's not going to be what you think, sees a woman find Christ, your mother, that you don't have any respect for, find Christ, break down in tears, which is what she's been doing all along anyways, and then find Christ, and all of a sudden now she's letting people walk on her. To me, I don't want that. That's not what I want. If that's what Christ is, I don't want that. That's weak. Now, as a kid, you don't know all the stuff that goes on in that. You're not looking behind the scenes and you're not seeing what's going on behind closed doors and you don't know the commitment she's making and the different troubles that she's having to find Christ to bring into her life. Because when it starts out, man, it's a rough go. You've got to turn everything over. Mm -hmm. and yeah, you're weak for a while, but you become strong. And that's something I didn't see. So my first experience of that was I like, But she brought me to church. And the reason why I went to church was because I wanted to get away from the chaos the screaming, the yelling, the fighting, and all the other stuff that went on. I'll go there and hang out and have some fun with some kids. When I went there, they were having this appreciation where you would go out to different communities and take this Wrigley Spearmint gum, and it was taped on a piece of paper, and it had a little get-together at this church, and the kids, the youth, were going to go out and hand these things out. And I was a part of that. I said, yeah, why not? I run the streets anyways. <laughs> So I go door to door handing these things out, getting free bubble gum. And I was walking around handing these things out. People were asking me questions. I thought, whoa, about 20 pieces of gum in my mouth, chew it for 10 minutes, spit it out, and get some more. It's a pretty cool deal to me. <laughs> so after I was doing this a while, not paying attention, letting my guard down, all of a sudden, and, and I didn't deserve it. I mean, let's deserve the Holy Spirit. How I many of us deserve what Christ gives us? I, I didn't do anything for this. God knew I needed something. And to this day, I believe this is the reason why I'm standing here today. Because if He didn't, I probably wouldn't have had that feeling and fought for it for so long, so hard to get here. But I felt the Holy Spirit that day. Mm. I felt it for no reason. And I felt it. And it was something that I will never forget. It was like this peace that came over me and this goodness that came over me. And it was like, I, I wanted that. I, I, where did it come from? I wanted that. And as I explained that to different people at the church, they told me, it's the Holy Spirit. Was, you know, to me, I, I saw what, you know, I didn't know the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, you know. But I knew it was God. I know, okay, well, that's God. So I'm starting to figure this thing, wow, well, whatever that was, man, I, I'd like to have that again. So doing that, I learned a little bit more about it. But, you know, it's not sinking in yet. As a 10-year-old kid, 11-year-old kid, things are just not sinking in a lot. But I knew that that feeling, the thing that I wanted, I wanted that. I got baptized. I accepted Jesus. Now, I knew who it was, I wanted it, and I accepted it in my life, and I, and I got it. I felt it. But again, I'm still stuck in that same world that I've always been a part of. A lot of people that, that I would love to be able to reach out to and be able to let them know that some of the things that I did in my life 
that maybe I led him astray. That I, I want to reach out. The more I can get out to, the more I can touch people, the more I can get out to those people that saw me saying God bless and doing the wrong things. Say, hey, no, that's wrong, man. This is the right way. I'm into group homework. We got some stuff going out in Gerlach. And, you know, ever since we started doing this, God has opened doors. Um, people keep saying, why would you, I mean, that's just, that's tough. Why would you do that? I mean, you're, you're, you're in faith. You got all this stuff. And it's like, like, so let me tell you something. If it wasn't for a man that did something for me, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I wouldn't even know Christ. I, I would know what the feeling was, but I wouldn't understand. Someone turn around and help me. And now I have an opportunity on a bigger stage, a bigger platform, in which God gave me that gift to be able to help these kids. Be able to use what I've done as far as being tough God. To be able to reach out to these kids and let them know what tough is. And be able to let, really understand what tough is. And I promise you this, if you guys read the Bible, you'll know that our Christian brothers and sisters were not weak. They were not weak. It was a violent world. And they stood up for Christ. Christ stood up for them. And he wasn't weak. And if you know God, you will be a stronger individual because no one can hurt you. You know what the best blessing in the world is? You can never die. <laughs> you know, if you live life like that, some people live like you're dying. <laughs> wow. Wow. I want to live like I'm going to never die. Right. <laughs> You know, my Holy Spirit, man, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to heaven. That's right. This body that I have, it's great. We're here to do something. And we need to do it. Don't be, don't be in fear. You live like God's on your side. Yeah, let's, let's do this. Um, let's all bow our heads. I know most of you here know Christ. And you know that the most important decision that you ever made in your life was the day that you made a stand for Jesus. Had Jesus live in your heart, become your best friend. Walk through the difficult times with. And there are people in this room today that if you were to die, you're thinking right now, if I were to die today, I, I really don't know if I'd go to heaven or hell. I'm not sure. And one of the main reasons that we have River Rock Christian Fellowship is so that you and walk out of here knowing I'm going to heaven. I know Jesus. When I go through those difficult times, when I go through those times of fear and uh, uh, times of, of fighting or struggling, I have Jesus in my court. I have Jesus with me. So with every eye closed, every head bowed, every Christian praying, right now, if you're here and you can't answer for sure, if you were to die today, whether you go to heaven or hell, I want you to slip your hand up right now real quick. Just slip your hand.